Um, good morning, everyone. Many thanks for taking the time to join us for our session this morning. Um, I'm John Lightfoot, Head of Relationship Management. I'd like to mention a few housekeeping points. Um, so first, please remain on silent and on mute for the duration of the session, unless you're asked to participate by Jane. Um, if questions can be submitted via the meeting chat, and we'll look to answer some of them along the way or at the end, where, wherever we feel is most appropriate. Um, we're recording today's session and that'll be available on the Ultimate YouTube channel later today or, or early tomorrow. And the presentation will also be emailed round to all attendees following the session. Um, so with the, the housekeeping done, I'd just like to introduce the host of today's session, Jane, by the way. So Jane's a coach, facilitator and speaker, and she works hard to help people to nurture their well-being, build confidence, resilience and self-esteem. So in today's session, Jane's going to talk to us about how we emerge from this ongoing, never ending period of uncertainty with renewed energy and how to reshape the future of resilience. So over to you, Jane. Lovely. Thank you very much, John. Good morning, everybody. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Um, I think you'll probably agree it's never been more important to find ways of handling change. Uh, 2020 has been like no other year. The pace, the variety of change. And we need to be able to bring forward our energy, our creativity, our problem solving abilities in so many different ways. So it's really vital that we attend to ourselves and support each other to maintain our resilience so that we can handle whatever life is throwing our way. So as John said, my work's all about um, supporting individuals and teams. It's about who we are, how we show up in the world, in the workplace, and how we relate to and manage ourselves. So that's our motivation, our energy, our triggers. And then from there, when we get a really good handle on that, how we then relate to other people in order to get the best out of each and every situation and relationship. Developing resilience is an important skill that we can all learn. So today I'm planning to share with you a tried and tested framework for assessing your responses to crisis. It's a framework that enables you to decide what you want to continue with, what you want to let go of and how you want to move forward. You'll also hear a little bit about the impact of stress and anxiety on the brain and how it affects our ability to think clearly. And then we'll also look at what can we do about that? with some actionable approaches to increasing your own personal resilience so you can feel confident in the choices and decisions that you make in terms of reshaping your future. So I hope that uh, you'll find that really useful. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. You might recognise those as the opening lines of Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. It was a time where people had diametrically opposing experiences at all happening at the same time. And you could say that that's perhaps a reflection of some of the things that have ha been happening to us in the last six months or so. It's been an incredibly difficult time in so many ways. And yet there are also some positives in there too. So what I'd like to do just to get things started is I'm hoping you've got pen and paper or an iPad or something to hand. I'm just going to invite you to take a couple of moments to consider, capture your own thoughts, thinking about the past six months. What have you gained? What have you learned? What have you rediscovered? And what challenges have you overcome? Come. So I'm going to give you probably, uh, I think, two or three minutes to do that. So just take a moment to reflect on that period and gather your own thoughts. And I would love to hear some of them if you're if you're open to it, but let's do some gathering first. I'll let you know when two minutes is up. Thank you. 
go one more minute. Okay, we're just into our last 15 seconds. So what would be really lovely would be to hear from one or two people whether you want to pop something that came to mind into into the uh, chat facility. Actually, I would love to just if somebody would like to share something that you've noticed about the last six months then please hop off mute and, and let's hear. Anybody willing to share something? So I'm willing to share. Lovely. Um, so 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 under overcome, I've got um so I have a brother with special needs and my mum was shielding following uh, my father passing away at Christmas. And so I, I had to overcome um caring for them remotely. Right. Without actually going into, you know, couldn't go into the house, had to stay distant all the time. So that was a massive challenge, but we kind of got through it. So, so that's probably been my biggest challenge and the thing that I've ever come and learned probably through the lockdown. And how, how's that left you feeling? Exhausted would be one word. Um, yes. uh, yeah, but, but you know, good. I achieved what I wanted to achieve. I, we've, we've gotten through it. Um, neither of us, none of us have been ill with COVID specifically. So, so, you know, that has got to be a positive. Um, and they, they've emerged and seem OK, So, um, which was what I wanted to achieve. But it is tiring. Yes, I can hear that. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody else who'd like to share anything? I'll share something. Uh, yeah. So yes. first of all, I'll start with a funny one, really, because so I've so gained a lot of weight. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I need to get my, my backside back into gear and get rid of some of that. Um, but mainly one uh, learn learned uh, learned a lot more colleagues, which is um, a positive really. Yeah. It's just sort of taking relationships sort of to a, a next level in that sort of sort of sense which is uh, obviously good for work the work environment mm, excellent and actually um i've heard that quite a lot you know whether it's been in the workplace or people have spent more time with family members um and found that wow you know that's been, that's been really a good thing particularly i think where family members have been maybe teenage children i've heard it quite a lot that actually we've really enjoyed hanging out together so there's there are some upsides as well as some challenges during this period. Thank thank you for sharing. I I don't know if there was somebody else who was also trying to come in at that point. Um yeah me I was gonna say I've um gained a couple of hours a day because uh, I don't have to commute. <laughs> yeah. Um and with that I've sort of rediscovered a, a love of exercise. I do actually drag myself up and do some exercise. Um. I've learnt I'm not a particularly good teacher. <laughs> um, okay. So my overcome was homeschooling. Oh, yes. Gosh, that has which been a, a joy. Mm -hmm. Have you enjoyed it? No, not at oh, all. Okay. <laughs> so you're glad that they're back at school now? Yes, teachers are saints. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, maybe one of the things that's happened is we've recognised the skills and talents that teachers bring even more so than we might have done previously. Yeah, so yeah definitely. With you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think just those those few examples there just show what a, a mixed bag this period of time has been. You know, best of times, worst of times. We've 
overcome things, we've developed relationships in ways that we perhaps never expected to. Um, and it, we have been through and are still in, to some degree, turmoil. One of the things that um, I think it's useful to notice is what's good in there as well as um, what isn't, what hasn't been so easy. And um, I said that I would share with you a framework. We will have all been adapting in all sorts of different ways through this period of time, whether in the workplace, whether at home. And um, we're not actually going to work through doing it, today, but I'm going to share it with you. And I know then that you'll have the slides afterwards. I'll just talk through. It's a two step process for helping us to understand what, what we've been doing and then what do we want to do going forward. So managing our future. So step one would be make a list of all the different things that you stopped doing when lockdown and beyond kicked in and also make a list of the things that you started doing your responses because you you had to change the, the way that you were doing things so it's really good to create it create a long exhaustive list uh, if you work with a team of people you could it's a, a great activity to do together um, and then when you've created your list step two is to use this framework and this is what you can use to help you reshape the future. I've taken this from uh, the Royal Society of Arts, uh, uh, published this as, a, as an approach to managing ourselves and situations through crisis. So if you look at the, um, the top part of the screen here, first of all, and think about all the things that you started doing uh, as a result of being in this crisis, so you could pause now and go down that list and, and evaluate how useful is this to me now? How useful is this to us as a team? Some things you will then be able to, and you perhaps already have stopped, they would fall in this box here because they were purely focused on being in crisis mode and we don't need those things anymore. Some things that you started doing, however, during this period, actually you may find, ah, oh, we weren't doing that before, but it's actually really quite useful. And therefore, you could actively choose how do we want to embed these things? How do we want to amplify them? Are there more things that we want to do with these particular approaches? So that gives you a springboard to new ways of doing things. Then there were the things that you stopped doing during the crisis. And actually, some of those, it may have felt quite difficult doing the stopping at the time. But as you now sit and evaluate their, um, their value to you, some of them you may well find you can let go of. You don't even need to think about ever bringing them back because they are no longer useful. They're no longer needed in the world that you're now living in. And there may be some things on that list that you look at that you think, actually, no, we do want to restart them. We, we may not be sure when, but actually they need to stay on. They feel like they're still valid and will still have use to us as and when we can take them forward. So that's how you kind of draw on old approaches that you want to continue. And the two combined gives you a springboard to, to move forward into the future. So as I say, we're not actually going to spend a load of time doing that now because it's something that, well, we, we'd spend the whole of the session on that, but I wanted to share the framework with you. I think it's a, it's a really useful way that can help you make choices and decisions about what you want to take forward. And really, the focus of this session is more on the who, who you are, how you show up in order to be able to make those choices and um, deliver on the choices and the decisions that you make, how you can maintain or even increase your resilience to enable you to do that. So um, one of the most valuable things that I think we can all do, it's very easy to get very, very busy, in fact, probably many of us were very busy before the crisis ever happened. And one of the most valuable things you can do for yourself and encourage other people around you to do is what we call a check in. So just check in with yourself and you can choose whatever the question is that you're checking in with. Um, here, what I would suggest is a check in on how stressed or yeah, how, how pressured, how pressurised feel for me at the moment where 10 would be pff, I'm only just you know the lid's about to jump off the pressure cooker and one is actually I'm completely chilled everything's fine and, and I've got it all in my stride and, and I'm absolutely fine so what I'd like to do is just um, for yourselves uh, just write down a number if you were checking in with yourself today you know thinking about how have I been this last week or so in terms of my sense of stress or feeling pressured where are you at? 
just capture that for yourself. And as I say, if you have a team, this is something you could do at the beginning of team meetings. It's a great way of just getting a, a quick snapshot of where people are at. So I'm going to assume that you've all written yourselves a number down now. What I'd like you to do is also then connect with a low score. So think about during the pandemic and everything that's been happening, we've all been having ups and downs. I'd like you to just for a moment connect with and maybe it maybe it's a recent score, but something that really enables you to feel the challenge when you were feeling the challenge, just so that you're having a brief experience. I'm not going to keep you there, um, but I would like you to just connect in with that. And maybe even write down that number. What's the lowest that you think you felt in terms of your own um, your own resilience, how, how pressurized you've been feeling during this period? And I'd like you to know stay there for a moment and just check in with your body when you remember being in that in that feeling that lower number how does it feel in your body what do you notice where do you notice it might be in your chest perhaps in your stomach perhaps there's tension in your shoulders just really connect with what that feeling is like So then it means that you can easily recognise what that feeling is like. And now what I'd like you to do is just put down anything that you've got around you, pen, paper, whatever. And I'm going to take you through a little process that will enable you to feel a completely different sensation. So make sure that your legs are uncrossed and your feet are on the floor. And that you're sitting in an upright, but not a stiff position, just a, a relaxed yet upright position. And for a moment now, just take your attention down to your feet. Think about your feet. And as you're thinking about your feet, then notice how they're feeling. What sensations are you noticing? Notice the sensation as they connect to the ground beneath them, all the different touch points. Press your feet into the ground just a little bit more firmly. And just notice how that feels. Now bring your attention up to the contact that you have with the seat. Notice underneath your legs, your thighs, your bottom, if you're leaning back. Just notice how that feels. How do those connection points feel? And as you keep your attention on these different sensations in your body, just notice how your muscles soften a little bit and tension eases and releases a little. Now bring your attention to your arms. Think about them. And notice again the sensations that you're feeling in your arms as you bring your attention to them. Let them relax and feel heavy. I'm curious to know if you felt those different parts of the body. Um, it would be great if maybe you could put something in in the chat if you did feel a softening and if anybody's um, able to share that. It would be good, good to hear. I'm, I'm so used to being in a room with people that I can see and ask people what's going on. It's, um, it's a very different experience doing this through, through Zoom, but I would love to hear how anybody, what anybody noticed in their body as we were doing that exercise. Is there somebody willing to just share a, share a little something? Or maybe not. Well, I'm hoping that what you experienced through that moment was that slight softening in your body. And you can use that approach, taking your attention 
to your body, to, to the place that you're sitting, any time when you're feeling in any shape or form in reality. Certainly when I've done this with groups before, I know that the they feel a very different sensation in their body and a shift from when they were connecting with feeling uh, tense or pressurized and then taking their attention to their body that actually it created a very different feeling for them. And the truth of the matter is that thinking and feeling are happening, but the brain can only process one of those at any one time. It can only be conscious of one of those at any one time. So there's either the thinking about something, for example, when I invited you to go think about your feet, or there's the connecting to how the feelings are within your feet and the contact points. We can only be doing one at a time. And it's our thoughts that we need to be able to manage in order to bring ourselves further up this scale, because it's our thoughts that actually are the thing that take us down the scale by escalating um, whatever it is that we're that we're dwelling on. So it's not actually an event that causes the stress. It's our own response to it. And that's largely happening in our thinking uh, capacity in times of uncertainty and change where fear often is uh, is present for us, whether or not we're completely aware of it. It's then that's what escalates the, the situation. And I, I there's kind of an example here of seeing it a little bit like a ladder. So something happens, you're involved in a conversation, that's the event, or you hear some news, there's something that you need to deal with. And actually what happens then is you, you observe what's happening. You then from there start interpreting, making meaning from what you've experienced and heard. And then you jump up to your own conclusions. And it's there, it's in that process that we can get caught up in and cause ourselves more stress than we actually need to. So the important thing is to really notice that we're doing that. And when that's happening, if at all possible, and it is possible to press the pause button. So instead of habitually joining in with um, that escalation from an event that's caused you some kind of a response all the way through and into you know imagining all sorts of scenarios, or it might be that you're replaying something that's happened and your brain is dwelling on it and con considering different ways and, and problems that might show up in the future. You're worrying and fretting over something. If you can press the pause button, you can actually save yourself a huge amount of uh, stress and a, a huge amount of time and energy as well. And the key is really to notice that you're doing this to yourself in the first place. We all have a choice. Um, it's not something that happens to us. We are engaged in it. And as soon as we realise, ah, I'm going off down that path. Make choices about other things that we can do, for example, interrupting it. And one of the ways that you can interrupt this, even if it's if it's kicked off and you're feeling like I've, you know, I've lost it, I've gone off down that path. Simply doing what the exercise that we just did, bringing your attention to your feet and I particularly like bringing attention to feet because when they're planted on the floor they're very grounded and we know that the human body doesn't feel stress in our we don't feel it in our feet I've never had anybody ever say to me ah oh, feeling really stressed today and it's my feet it's always parts of the core or shoulders or in the head so by taking your attention down to your feet you're interrupting the the stress response that you're actually experiencing and it is a natural response. You know, sometimes uh, it's very easy to berate yourself for going there and actually far better to have a bit of understanding and a bit of self-care and compassion. But it's no surprise that you go there. I just want to share a little bit of the, the neuroscience that sits behind this. So the, the, the experience that you're having when um, something happens in your world and you kick off into that stress response is it's what's known as or what's called, some people would call the amygdala hijack. So the way our bodies work is we are taking in information all the time through all of our senses, our taste, our smell, our sight, our sound, our hearing. Um, everything is is gathering information and much of it we're not consciously aware of, but it is happening all the time. Thousands and thousands of bits of information are coming in through our bodies. And they gather into our bodies and then connect into our nervous system to feed it up into the brain. 
and it comes up um, uh, one of the most important nerves in the body comes up and connects the stomach the heart and the brain now when the information comes in and this is in you know within less than a second the first part of the brain that it hits is this this little area here at the top of the brain stem called the amygdala and the amygdala is the part of the brain that is responsible for our fight flight or freeze response it's that ancient part of our brain that evolved thousands and thousands of years ago in order to keep us alive so we would be on alert noticing what's going on and is it safe and then in that split second moment making a choice between do i need to run uh, do i stay and fight or actually do i do i just uh, go into freeze mode so that part of the brain is still there it is the first part of the brain that all information that comes in hits first and if that kicks off if any of you have read um the chimp paradox by steve peters this is really what he's talking about it's the chimp part of the brain that starts giving you a hard time and and telling you that you've done things wrong or badly or whatever and can hijack you away from any um, logical thinking because the part of the brain that developed over time that is what makes us human is this front part of the brain here the thinking brain this part uh, behind the forehead the prefrontal cortex this is the seat of logic it's the seat of rational thinking and that's the part of us that can enable us to make decisions however if we've kicked off if if the information that's come in has caused us to kick off and it's sent us into that fight flight or freeze then we just can't think it just uh, it just doesn't happen and i'm sure you can all relate to that if you've ever been in a, a stressful situation where suddenly you can't remember things that normally you would know and you just can't decide sometimes actually the words don't come out very well because you've lost clarity, you've lost access to that rational part of yourself. And it's a primitive thing. It's there to keep us safe. Uh, so it does have a really good function. However, it can also hold us back from um, making positive and useful decisions that would allow us to grow and move forward because it actually is the part of the brain that res responds quite badly to change. What's the safest option for us? Well, I guess the safest option for us all is, as we had to do in lockdown, if you stayed at home, battened down the hatches, then you're not going to expose yourself to any kind of danger. However, if that's the life that you live, then you're also not going to grow, you're not going to develop, you don't get to contribute everything that you have to contribute to the world. So it does have a role, however, it can also hold us back. And so it's really important that we, we learn how to how to handle and manage it. And I want to just share with you um, the link that we all have that takes us to what I would call our sweet spot. So your sweet spot is that place. It, it's a really resilient, relaxed you where what you do, what you think and what you feel is all in complete alignment. So if you can think of a time when uh, either it could be a work, something that you do at work or a hobby or an interest that you have. If you've ever been in a situation where you go, gosh, I can't believe how much time's passed while you were doing that particular activity, that's you living and being in your sweet spot. Your thoughts are aligned to what you're doing, your feelings are aligned, and quite often these are the things that bring us a lot of joy. And actually, it's really important that we, uh, we're able to be in that space because that also boosts our resilience and our ability to handle life. So when uh, when we are triggered in the way that we, we were just exploring with the amygdala hijack, then actually the thinking part of this is hijacked too. So what can we do about it? Well, there are a number of different things. Uh, it is important at some point to give space to some of the feelings and thoughts that come up. It, it would be very easy to say, well, I'll just distract myself. I'll take myself away from that. I'll do that thing that Jane said about, you know, focusing on my feet or I'll just go and do something different to get myself out of this way of thinking. It can be really helpful to do that. However, if you only ever distract yourself and never allow yourself to notice and really experience the feelings, they don't go away. They stay in your body and therefore they're actually that's part of the tension that you're holding and this kind of a there's a cumulative effect they mount up 
and then maybe they come out at a point in time when you didn't when you were surprised that they came out and the, you didn't intend them to so you know sometimes we can be snappy with somebody and it's got nothing to do really with what's going on in that conversation between us and them but it it's often to do with we're storing some other stuff up that we haven't yet dealt with so I'm just going to invite you to try a little exercise that is a great way of processing. Of course, if you can talk to somebody about it, that's always a good option. But not all of us want to talk to, to somebody else about challenges and difficulties. And actually, sometimes it's not appropriate or we don't have time um, and it gives us an option. So what I'd, what I'd like you to do is just think of something that has or does at the moment cause you some degree of stress and frustration, anxiety, annoyance, uh, and just grab a piece of paper and a pen if you can, uh, preferably a piece of scrap paper, because this is not something for keeping and I'm not going to ask anybody to share anything here, but just take two minutes now to just allow whatever you think about that particular situation or that person or whatever it is that's been causing you stress and concern, just get it out of your head and down on paper. Put everything down. You don't. It's not. It's not about marvelous sentences. It doesn't matter about your spelling. It's about just getting it out of here, and out of your body and onto paper. Include in there, you know, any judgments that you're having. Quite often, we're very negative about ourselves when we're when we're in this state of mind. So, any judgments we've got about ourselves, any judgments we've got about other people, it really doesn't matter as long as you get it written down on paper. So I'm just going to give you, I'll give you a two minute window to do that because I would like you to experience it right now. Some people say to me it's quite challenging and difficult because they don't ever give themselves permission to do it. And then I have other people who say, gosh, two minutes was way too short an amount of time. I had so much more I could say. So much more that I wanted to let out. You've got another 30 seconds. OK, that was just two minutes. So I'd just like you to check in with yourself now if you did that activity. <clears throat> and um, oh, actually, sorry, I've missed a step out. So if we were in a room right now, I would be coming around with a bin and asking you to rip it up or screw it up in a ball and throw it in the bin. So if you have just written uh, and, and engaged in that activity, I would now encourage you to rip it up and throw it away. And the reason for that is this is not about dwelling. In fact, it's the exact opposite. This is about letting out from here everything that's swirling around. Apparently, we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day and many of them will focus on the negative. So this is about letting it out, getting rid of it, processing it in order to release yourself from it instead of carrying it around. Uh, it would be great to hear if anybody's willing to share how you're feeling now. Quite often people tell me they feel lighter as a result of doing that, 
that it's been, you know, they feel some sense of release or you might pop that in the in the chat or ask questions about that at the end. Um, but I've certainly found it an incredibly helpful tool, as have many of the, the people that I've worked with. And what I would recommend is that um, you do it as a as a regular practice. So ideally in the morning, when we first wake up, um, we have been processing our previous day's um, events overnight through our dreams, whether or not we remember them. So when we wake up in the morning, it's a really great time of day to do this activity. Uh, I suggest you grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever you like to do, and then get some scrap paper, pen that you like writing with, set the timer for 10 minutes and just let it flow. And actually it doesn't all have to be negative, but it's just let out, how am I feeling today? What, how am I as I arrive in this day? And just let it all out. And at the end of that, rip it up and throw it away. It's a little bit like um, a, a shower for the brain. So you're actually allowing your brain to cleanse itself and, and release all of that stuff that otherwise you'll be carrying around with you all day. Uh, the other way that I find it really helpful, uh, the other um, time I find it really useful to use this is if something happens in my world that triggers me and I want to get back to what I was, you know, whatever I wanted to focus on, maybe the next piece of work or whatever, perhaps I've had a phone call and it's bugging me in some way. I'll just, I know that I can either fight it, but what, I, what I've noticed is when I fight it, then it fights back and it actually takes more time to move through it. So as an alternative, I will uh, turn to this approach and just do a mind dump on whatever it is that's happened. Just, you know, stream of consciousness, let it all out. And actually quite often what I find is as well as the release, I maybe work out things that I could go back and say or do differently or I move through it and I'm able to just let it go. It's a really useful um, tool in your toolkit rather than always tamping things down and trying to keep a lid on it. And if you're somebody who likes uh, harmony and good relationships with people, uh, you might find that actually you are, you are quite often the one who's tamping th your own feelings down. This is a great way of letting those things out and then they don't build up. So um, what else? A uh, couple more things to share with you. So options then in terms of dealing with um, those stresses and strains, we've, we've used an approach that's about distracting your, your focus with the attention to your feet. We've just done some processing. There are other ways of um, distracting or shifting your perspective and attention to other things. Um, and I'd love to hear from you, maybe, uh, maybe when we get into questions. Um, but another thing that we can do is take our attention to our breathing. So um, you've probably heard about this, and if any of you are in, involved in any forms of mindfulness or meditation, then the breath is a really important part of it. There's a particular version of that that I'd like to share with you that I think is um, that I think is really, really effective. And the reason it's very effective is it again works with the body's natural systems. So normally, when we breathe in, we are stimulating our nervous system a little bit. We're, we're at a slightly more heightened state because we've taken oxygen in and we're ready for whatever might be coming. The opposite happens within our body when we breathe out. It's the soothing part of our system and actually everything goes back into relaxation. So knowing that, um, there was some research done in the States with um, war veterans who had PTSD and they were taught a particular approach to breathing which is absolutely fantastic. And it's about making sure that your out breath is twice as long as your in breath. So that, for example, if you choose to breathe in for three, then you're breathing out slowly for six. And actually, if you imagine you're breathing like four sides of a box, so there's the in breath for three, there's pausing at the top for three, there's the out breath for six, and then there's a pause at the bottom for three. And if you are at any point feeling really stirred up and you bring your attention to your breathing and you use that approach and just keep going around that cycle slowly, you will calm your own system down. And it's great to know that we have it within us to be able to do that. Um, and, you, and what I love about internal mechanisms, it's you and your breath. And it doesn't matter if the thoughts keep coming back in. As soon as you notice that's happened, 
just bring your attention back to the breathing. Uh, one other thing I'd like to share with you in terms of interrupting that pattern, if you think about the do think uh, feel um, alignment, then there are things that we can do. And a do for me would be change your physical state. So I've just stood up now because if I'm sitting down and I'm feeling fed up, I'm feeling stressed, actually simply by standing up and maybe thinking about something positive or thinking myself into a positive state. I don't know whether you can see me. I've actually I've adopted what's known as a power pose. So standing with your hands on your hips is known to be a pose that actually brings us to a feeling of greater strength and actually moving around like that. So if we were in a room, I'd be stretching around the room now. In fact, I, I can feel like the urge to do it here. But I hope you get the picture that actually shifting your body, shifting your physiology will also help you to shift from the thoughts that are causing you stress and, and bother. And then one final thing that I think is important for us all to do on a daily basis is to remember the things that we feel grateful for. We can actively prime ourselves to tune into the positive in our lives. And when we do that, we actually boost our own energy, our motivation, our ability to solve problems, our ability to come up with new ideas and solutions. Creativity is all massively boosted when we focus on what's good. And so a really useful daily practice is to have a book that you write down three things that you feel grateful for or that you feel positive about that happened in that day. And actually, I would encourage you to extend this to the people around you. So some people that I work with, then um, we talk about making this something that maybe you chat to your family over the evening meal. So you get everybody in the room coming up with three things that that went well or that they feel good about that happened that particular day. It's a lovely way of building relationship because you're getting to hear what's happened in somebody in, in those near ones um, lives or you could do this with teams when you get together as a team. Again, it's a great way of hearing what's what's important to other people, what's going on for them and what's make, what makes them feel good. And there's there's an energy that comes off this so that when we do it for ourselves, that's one amazing thing. If you share it, then actually you build and increase that positive energy and you're building relationship and understanding between you, which will stand you in good stead when you've got other things that you need to tackle as a, as a group of people. Um, there's research again. Um, if you're interested in reading any more about any of this, there's a book um, that I often turn to called um, Positive Psychology. And it's actually written by somebody who was interested in what can we do to overcome depression? But we don't have to be depressed to adopt these things. And we know from research that this ratio of three positives to one negative thought is the way that we I just want to share a little extract from this. When you experience more positive emotions than negative ones at a ratio of three positive emotions to every one negative, you can enter into an upward spiral of growth. This spiral of development takes you into a place of greater well-being, which leads to positive change and flourishing. I like that word. I love flourishing. The upward spiral can even culminate in a personal transformation, the result of broadening your mind and opening you up to new knowledge, new skills, new people and new ways of being. So I'm sure many of you have heard of the idea of you know, writing down and sharing daily gratitudes, daily things that make you feel good. And like so many things, it's a simple idea. It just takes a decision to say, I'm going to do that and I'm going to make it a daily practice. And the more of those positive habits you cultivate, the more you feel in control of your own destiny and you're feeding yourself to support yourself through anything that might be happening. I love this, um, this quote from Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And by forming really positive habits, you can actually support yourself towards if excellence is what you're striving for in, in any capacity in your life, whether it's relationships, work, whatever it might be. We actually have a huge amount of agency, even in times like this, where there's stuff going on out there in the world that we can't control. 
we can still manage and control our own responses by adopting they are going to make us feel really positive and good. So I'm, I'm just going to wrap up and then I'm going to be open to any questions. And the wrap up is simply to share with you if you found that interesting, stimulating, there is something that you can download from my website. I will have covered some of those things that are in that free downloadable called Get Into Your Personal Sweet Spot, but not all of them in the conversation that we've had today. Uh, so feel free to go there, have a mooch about and, and help yourself to the downloadable. And then I also wanted to make you aware of um, a network that I am um, about to start leading. It's been running within an organisation called Oasis for the last three, uh, three plus years. And what it's about is gathering together people who have wellbeing responsibility within their organisation. We meet quarterly to explore what's the latest thinking, what's the latest research. And we're running a, a taster event on the 12th of November. So if you know anybody that you think, ah, oh, that could be of interest to them, I'd be absolutely delighted if you pass on the Eventbrite link, which will, of course, be in the in the slides uh, when they're circulating. But for now, um, it's been a real pleasure to be with you to share some ideas, and I am now open to questions. That was fantastic, that was fantastic Jane. Jane. Um, um, so there is a question. So there is a question just yeah. Yeah. Uh, any tips any to make tips some, make of, these some of these daily Everything going on in the day normally gets in the way. OK, so I think um, when I was with the Aristotle's quote, I think what I said was it's a decision. It's like anything, you know, any new habit that we want to form, whether it's I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go running and connecting with why you want to do it can be really, really helpful. So what's your why? What are the benefits of doing this thing? And I would spend some time writing them down. Get really, really clear as to why this this activity, whatever it is you're choosing to adopt, is a good idea. And make sure you've got that somewhere to hand so that if you're having a wavery day, you can just go, ah, oh, just just remind myself as to why this is a good idea. The other thing I, I'm a real believer in is make it as easy as possible for yourself. So choose the time of day that it's going to work for you. I know, for example, with the mind dump, I said early in the morning is a good time to do it. It's not the only time of day to do it. I have clients who've chosen to do it in the evening because it works in the way that they live their lives. It's a good thing for them to do as a right, I do that before I go to bed. So it's my part of my getting ready for bed routine. And just as we don't even think about um, cleaning our teeth every day, we just we get up and do it. We do it at the end of the day when you you have to be persistent at the beginning. There's a theory that it takes 21 repetitions. I don't know whether that's actually true or not, but you know, some some psychologists say that 21 consistent repetitions helps us to embed a new habit. And it, it is about yeah, making it as easy as possible for yourself. Having a go and if you fall off, getting back on or, or if you realise oh, that wasn't the best time of day for me, OK, I can either beat myself up about it or give it up or I could find a different time of day or maybe that isn't the habit that's the right one for me. What else could I do that's going to work for me? Make it easy for yourself and make a commitment to yourself and have a go. Cool. Thanks a lot. I've got a question and um, what would you suggest for children um, and I asked this only I've got a seven year old um, little boy and he came he, it, the teacher actually had a word with me yeah this morning when I dropped him off and said the other day he said he doesn't feel like himself at the moment and I think he's feeling anxiety and not really knowing how to express it um, and it's quite hard to get children to do these types of exercises so would you suggest anything else for for them especially given what they've seen or been through these last six months yes um actually you can do it as play and do something creative so um if you like paints crayons whatever then it's actually really good to do something where it's in your hand you can do it on you know on a screen but actually um getting pens paper whatever and just uh asking him how, do, how are you feeling what should we should we do i'm going to do a picture about how i'm feeling uh, and it might just be splurges of color 
or it might be that he draws or um, colours in something that is recognisable and you just get him just get him to open up and share a little bit about what it is that he's drawing to the degree that he's willing to express it but even him getting it out of his head and his body onto paper will give him the benefit of what we were talking about earlier. Oh, that's a great idea, thank you. And I would try the uh, the gratitude or the what, just what's one thing that went well today? Not, not to make life, um, this isn't about not allowing pain and difficulty and negative feelings to be expressed, but actually it's about getting the brain to in the habit of noticing good things. So you might not go with three, to begin with, but at least, you know, if, if it, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with them, um, puts me in mind of Stuart Little, I'm pretty sure it's that film that I watched when my kids were little, and they would at the dinner table have a thing called, they, I think they go little high, little low, and they'd each share something that had been their high point in the day. It doesn't have, have to be anything spectacular, it could be, you know, Oh, so and so, oh, I was going to say so and so held my hand in the playground today. Of course, that's probably not really allowed. It could be I, I saw something or I got to play such a game that I wanted to play or whatever it is. It's just getting the brain focused on noticing the good stuff and creating space for expression of what just what's real and let him let it out. Oh, that's no, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anything else, guys? It sounds like that's that, Jane. So, um, that's been absolutely fantastic. So, so, a lot of people in the organization have got some learning development time marked out today. And I'm definitely going to have a look at the. Um, and that was absolutely fantastic. I love things with that kind of structure. So, th thanks a lot for sharing that. Um, as I mentioned at the start, um, the slides are going to be circulated and the recording is will be available on the Ultimate YouTube channel for, for people to, to watch again or, or pick bits out that they particularly want to go with. Um, but for now, I just want to thank you, Jane. That, that, that was absolutely excellent and um, I'm sure everyone really appreciated it. So um, I hope you have a great rest of the day and thanks to everyone for dialing in. Thank you. Thank you, John. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, yeah, I hope that people, you know, even if you just take one thing, then that's one more thing in your toolkit. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day.